Now we move on to thermal expansion of solids and liquids. We look at how different materials react to different levels of extreme heat. We can see by the table we have the average coefficients of expansion for materials near room temperature and you can see for each one of them they're rated in per degree Celsius. Remember the minus one means it's in the denominator. So per degree Celsius the average coefficient of linear expansion. And it moves every, from everything from aluminum to concrete to alcohol to mercury to air and to helium. So this is a table that um, you need to keep handy. Um, leave, a, uh, leave a note in your notebooks uh, what page is on and what table it's on because you will refer back to it. So if we look at the relationship, let's look at a linear thermal expansion, i.e. like a, a long cylindrical rod per se, or a, a long cylindrical or a long bar. <clears throat> the definition says that any change in length is equal to a coefficient of linear expansion times the initial length times the change in temperature. So the coefficient of linear expansion alpha which is in per degree Celsius or degrees to the minus one. So keep that handy uh, for when you're doing your reductions because you may need to be moving your degree relationship in and out of the numerator and denominator. The change in temperature then, the, the last term in that expression then is what we've seen before, temperature final minus temperature initial. So we can substitute that into the delta T relationship. Then rearranging terms we have delta we have the temperature final minus the temperature initial that is equal to the ratio of the change in the length divided by the coefficient of expansion for that material times the original length. And so now at this point if we're solving for the temperature final we would have the temperature final then would be equal to the ratio of the change versus the original times the coefficient plus the original length. So finally then we can solve for the total length by saying that the length is equal to L initial plus the change in the length for the material. And so we can look at different types and different shapes. Geometry, uh, some, the, the geometry um, is about you know, looking at which portions of the material expand or contract and which do not. Thermal expansion then of a homogeneous metal washer shows that as the washer is heated, all of the dimensions increase. So the inside dimension would change with respect to the same amount as the outside relation. So we have A plus delta A for the internal radius. We have B plus delta B for the external radius. And then we have the temperature initial plus delta T. So because the linear dimensions of an object change with temperature, it follows that the surface area and the volume also change with temperature. So if we consider a square having an initial length of L initial or L naught on a side, we can then run this through the relationships that says if we have a surface area A naught which is equal to length times width or L squared naught, then we can insert the, these values into our relationships to come up with an area and a length relationship. So the definition says that L, the length is equal to L naught plus alpha L naught delta T. And then for L squared, then we just square both sides of the equation and we come up with L squared is equal to these two terms times themselves. Remember, what we're trying to do here is come up with a relationship for area given our length measurements. So L squared plus two times the coefficient times L squared initial times the change in temperature plus L squared naught times the coefficient times delta T squared. Okay, in this case they're saying that alpha 
times delta t is much smaller than 1. Okay, so it's, we're not looking for a lot of change. So, therefore, alpha delta t squared less than 1 can be neglected. So, we just, it's one of those things we make an assumption, we get rid of it, and we don't worry about it again. So, now we can say since L squared is equal to A, just where we started, the area, then L squared naught plus 2 times the coefficient plus or times L squared naught delta T, then we can start moving and replacing our relationships. Alpha, the area actually is equal to area initial plus 2 times the alpha area initial delta T. So the change in the area then is equal to the, 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 the final minus the initial, and that will equal then 2 alpha area naught delta T. 2 times alpha then we will redefine now as the coefficient of area expansion. So alpha is for linear. This little, this little symbol here uh, is the coefficient of area expansion. And if I'm not mistaken, that's gamma. Um, delta A then, the area is equal to the change, which is equal to the last expression. So what we do then similarly is we run through the same mathematics to come up with a change in volume. We call it beta times V naught delta T for the volume, where beta is three times alpha. So beta is the coefficient of volume expansion. If we look at some examples here, a bimetallic strip that bends as the temperature changes because two metals have, they're dissimilar, they have different expansion coefficients. You can see at room temperature, both of them lay fairly flat, but at a higher temperature, one will start to bend the other. They actually will both start to bend, but one will outpace the other. So if we use this like with a contact switch, you can see, like for your, your heater and cooler and air conditioner in your home, then we have an on position set to a dissimilar material relationship of 25 degrees Celsius. When it goes up 5 degrees, you can see it breaks contact and in this case would turn off, let's say, the air conditioner or a heater. So the bimetallic strip then is used in a thermostat to make or break electrical contact. So let's take one quick example here before we stop here. We're looking at uh, expansion of a railroad track. A steel railroad track has a length of 30 meters. Notice we carried it out to three places. You should be getting used to this. When the temperature is zero degrees Celsius, so we're at the freezing point, what is the length on a hot day when the temperature is 40 degrees Celsius? So for steel, alpha is equal to 11 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree Celsius. The change in temperature then from before and after, 40 degrees minus 0 degrees, is a 40 degree change. The change in length then is equal to alpha initial length times the change in temperature. So we have 11 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree Celsius times 30 meters times 40 centimeters, because this is our initial, this is our change, 40 centimeters, gives us, now you can see why we needed <coughs> out to three decimal places, 0 0.013 meters. So the change then, overall, the initial plus the change, 30 plus 0 0.013 gives us 30.013 meters for the expansion that occurred on a hot day. A steel railroad track then, same, same relationships. Um, what is the length on a cold day when the temperature is zero degrees Fahrenheit? So we're good, they're asking us to do some conversions here. So we have the same alpha. We now have to use our conversions. Temperature in Celsius is equal to five ninths, the difference in the two temperatures. So we have zero and minus 32. So it becomes 5 ninths of minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 17.8 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's the value of the temperature then. The change in temperature then from minus 17.8 to zero is that minus 17.8.
So now we can put that change in temperature relationship into our change of length relationship and we end up with minus 0 0.006 meters or an overall change in length of 30 minus 0 0.006 or 29.994 meters. Okay, uh, this example here, you can take a quick look at it. What we're looking at is we've extracted the middle out of this square and it has an area of 100 centimeters squared. A hole in a substance expands in exactly the same way as it would a piece of the substance having the same shape. So now we're dealing with area. So delta area, the change in area then is 2 times alpha. So 2 times alpha gives us 22.10 to the minus 6 per degree Celsius. The change in temperature then from 100 and minus 20 to 100 gives us 80 degrees Celsius. The change in the area then becomes 22 times 10 to the minus 6 times 100 meters squared times 80 degrees Celsius or 0.18 square centimeters. So the area then becomes 100 centimeters squared plus 0.18 centimeters squared or 100.18 centimeters squared. Okay, so that is our linear expansion. When we come back, we'll look at the unusual behavior of water.